Sagittarius. Hello, Sagittarius, and this is your forecast for March 2013. And if you listen to your forecast in February, you heard about the stellium that was moving through your chart, and now they've clustered up even more. And it's a very rare experience, but you have it here in your fourth house. And what does that mean? Well, the fourth house is your inner identity, your soul connection, your roots, the past, your family, your heritage. It is the genesis genetics in your spiritual self. So it is time to kind of look at what is going on in the deepest sense of your being. You know, you might feel that this month anything due to family, that could be parents, grandparents, like I said, your heritage. It could be on an even deeper level uh, or dimension where you're focusing on who you are, essentially who you are, where you came from. We're talking past lives and where you're heading now. Where do you want to head? How are you going to be transforming this new sense of self that's coming in? And so I'm seeing and feeling this soul urge to really find the sense of identity. Now, we can say that the sun in our chart is our identity and our sense of self. Same thing goes for the first house, our rising sign, sense of self. But nothing is really deeper than the fourth house. And for you, Pisces, your fourth house in your solar chart is ruled by Neptune and Pisces which really brings it to a level now which is very open dimensionally to you. Remember that Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac. You know, so it's a collective consciousness from everything you've ever experienced from childhood to now, but also past lives to now. Okay, so it's coming together. All these dimensions are filtering in to one. So it may be a very I won't say just spiritual time because it is, but a, a very unique uh, phase of contemplation, uh, that sense of identity, questioning itself. Why am I here? Where am I heading? What do I not want any longer? And what do I do want to kind of implement now in this incarnation? So you have the Sun, Mercury, New Moon, Venus, Mars, and Neptune all in your chart and it is in uh, the sign of Pisces which rules this fourth house as I said so there's like a double whammy there in this sense and then the other only planets on the outside now currently transiting the rest of your scope is only Jupiter Uranus Saturn and Pluto and, and they're like outer planets not not necessarily uh, Jupiter of course nor is Saturn but Uranus and Pluto is, so they kind of work back here anyway, you know, in the higher self, so to speak. Um, but yeah, so, and these outer plants, they're, they're helping you focus in deeply. So if you can take some time off this month, just in between, where you ask yourself these most potent questions, and as a Sagittarius, you have it made. I mean, you always seem to ask yourself these questions anyway, because most of you are a philosopher at heart. So this is your time to really hone in and start fishing there. And you might be able to achieve some glimpses into a higher state. Pay attention to your dreams, do a journal or something. And you might be amazed to see what kind of symbolism that will come through as your angels, your guardians, or your higher self tries to communicate this with you. Also, back to the more worldly level, fourth house is also property and home. And some of you might really start feeling the urge to either redo, renew, or buy new property. And uh, just to kind of get, a, shall I say, a new lift. Uh, because, you know, where we live, it gives us pretty much a sense of self. How we feel, where we're at. Some of you might want to, you know, notch it up a little bit and expand because Jupiter is all about that expansion and Jupiter is now moving forward. It has been retrograde since October of last year so it kind of went to sleep there for a while but now it's back on your side. That Jupiter is in your seventh house for partnerships 
That could be significant other, like spouse. It could also be business relationships, one-on-one, -on -one, which really now can behoove you if you have felt that some of that has kind of stalled for, for, for some time, you will start feeling that that communication is going to open up and uh, where you can start working together now on a more, should I say, optimistic and expansive level. So that's all good and well. And then that Saturn is still currently in a 12th house where it's going to be for some time. And the 12th house is a karmic residue. And so right now your, your Saturn is kind of wrapping up a 28 year cycle of what you've experienced these last 28 years. Um, you're only kind of not even a third through the sign there. So uh, give and take, say Saturn taking two and a half years, that's 26. So let's say go back and look at 24 years ago. This is 24 to 25 years ago. This is what you're now wrapping up as it's transiting through this 12th house. Now Saturn has taken a break. Okay, so the, it's not going to give you too much of an oomph or too much of a hard deal right now. Uh, it is not going to be moving forward again before July this year. Then we have that Pluto second house for finances. Some of you Sagittarians are really going through the ringer to find your way uh, how to uh, redo, remake. And uh, Pluto can be the magician. Uh, but before you can come into this transformational new self within your finances, something's got to go. You know, the old thing's got to shed. And it's through the shedding phase and experience which seems always the most difficult because you're feeling something is ending and it is tough and it's rough and Pluto may really get a grab of your inner cord there um, for a while but then you know go through it elegantly uh, embrace it you know it's hard when something dies from us but as we let go in that symbolic death experience of it we're not talking physical death but, but when we let go of that, whatever it is we've worked so hard for, shed it, dare to, don't cling to it. As you let that go, something new will be replaced. And this is where I want you to get. This is all for you, pretty much early Sagittarians, those born from, say, the end of uh, November there and probably to around the 8th or 10th, uh, you will be feeling this the strongest. So it's all about taking that leap of faith and say, you know what, I did my best, let it go, and then watch the universe drop something in your lap. So it is a test. It's a test by fire, and you will see huge transformations taking place. We've talked about this in your earlier uh, charts as well, and if you didn't listen to February, go back, listen to it, also that of January, or also that of the full year of 2013. We'll give you some more insights. But yes, listen, uh, there, there's a whole thing here we're going to go through of your transits. There's a lot taking place this month and a lot of excitement as well. Just wanted to say that I can only compromise, um, uh, or not compromise, compress so and so much in these short videotapes. So I'll, I'm putting together a class for you so that we can meet there and go more thoroughly through your scope because I get so many emails and questions about this and that. and can only do so much here on the YouTube, but just check the link for the class. And let's move on to your uh, transits this month. Okay, starting off top of the month. Uh, we, do, we know that Mercury has gone retrograde right now. So from the 23rd of February and to March 17th. So in that time, try to avoid signing any kind of contracts, legal papers or whatnot, or even buying new equipment just because the mechanics of that communication, the printed or expressed word, it just tends to go a little bit haywire there under retrograde. I know most of you know about that Mercury retrograde, but for those of you who are new to it, just heed the message. The rest of us knows from years of experience that this retrograde period is a time to kind of let it go, uh, just let it rest. You can negotiate, but don't sign. It may have to be redone. Anywho, uh, starting on the 4th here, uh, between the 4th, 1st uh, and the 4th, we have Pluto sextiling uh, the Sun and also the Sun trining uh, Saturn. 
So what that means is uh, the sun is going to be communicating here with these two forces uh, on the first. And whatever you have been working for now through January, and I'd also say there February, now is the time for things to come forward, you know, to, to actually go in and secure and create something transformative for you. Pluto is also uh, very much so like Saturn, the authorities to be, whether that is superiors as is your boss or parents or whatever the deal is, those higher ups. Right now you can make a great impression. And then on the fourth, we have Mercury also doing talks with the sun, it's conjunct. And uh, it may be you kind of looking at your finances. Are they good enough? There tends to be like a feeling of something not just coming together exactly how you want it. There's a little edge, but hold your horses. Don't express it yet. Because on the 6th and 7th, this is the days for you to negotiate. Bring it up to your um, supervisor or your boss. If you're thinking that you would like to ask for a raise, this is the time. And why? Well, Venus, which rules money, right then is sextile Pluto, and it is trine Saturn. So this means that you can come across very confident. So you won't feel that you're coming across with an edge or with some resentment or that, that never is received well anyway, but you can come across very elegant. Uh, and Mercury is there con uh, conjuncting uh, Venus, so your communication uh, and your skills and the way you present it also is going to be received in a very graceful manner. Great days for this. And Mercury is also trining Saturn, so that means that you have your own sense of authority. You're coming across as you know your own worth, your self-worth, and this is what you're wanting to, to show the world. And it's also sextile in Pluto, so it's with grace, determination, uh, confidence that you can actually put together one of the greatest deals. I won't say this entire year, but at this point, absolutely, yes. Mark these days. Now, try to avoid any contract, though. Don't sign it, but negotiate it. And these talks here with Saturn and Pluto, as far as your finances, they're coming between your fourth house your second house of income, and your 12th house of a karmic uh, uh, residue, like I was saying. So to me, it kind of shows me that you have a stored karmic bag somewhere. You might have been doing a lot of work, Sagittarius, for some time over a long period where you felt you weren't paid for the time that you had input, you know, because you were working above and beyond. And if that is the matter, the universe may be able to see right now that, yes, you do deserve everything for your hard work. So just kind of watch that things might start falling into your lap and you'll go, hey, where'd this come from? You've earned it in the past, okay? So it's coming from the past. Then we have the new moon here on the 11th, also in your fourth house. Once again, there's that, that um, a sense of wanting to renew where you live or also tap more into your heritage, your past. Um, good time to put in intentions for where you want to be later on, not just this month, but for the rest of the year, in this section, where you want to live sometime this year. Great time for that. And then on uh, also March 11th, uh, we have uh, your uh, Mars moving into Aries. So for you, that will be moving into your fifth house of creativity creative projects, uh, love uh, also, and also in the area of children. So your focus is going to shift on how you can help children or your teenagers uh, or the group of children education around you. Um, then we have Venus also moving into the same area of your chart on the 21st. So then we have both Mars Venus moving into uh, this area, and I, I think it's going to be very exciting for you because Uranus is there, and Uranus is always full of surprises. It might just dump something on you unexpectedly, and it, it's like holding this golden key, opening up a door and saying, here, go for it. Here's a project for you. What are you going to do about it? You know, so you might have to be making some swift um, decisions, but that's all about a little bit later in April. So stay tuned. Subscribe for your channel so you make sure to hear next month's exciting forecast. 
And then we have the 26th and 27th. So what have you noticed here about your scope this month? It's very special. Not only because of the stellium that's all lumped together there in one area of your chart, but if you noticed, there is a very active first week of this month, and then it's totally still. And then nothing much is going to happen before the 26th, 27th. So there's a period of two to two and a half weeks where it seems very calm. There's not much staring. And you Sagittarians, you're fired and you like to have action and activity. And then suddenly it's like somebody turned the world off. And uh, that might... Um, amaze you but don't let it fluster you because whatever took place here in this first week of march you'll see how it's going to come together there on the 26th and uh, the aspects then are mars jupiter they are sextile meaning that your drive your ambition your goals are going to touch jupiter which is the blessed abundant planet which is going to bring things in not only into the open but really give you, well, probably it's going to be triggering this 12th house thing of your, your karmic back, hopefully. But then we also have Mars there uh, standing up towards new um, challenges. Mars is in uh, your 5th house and now it's going to be challenging that Pluto in the 2nd house. So that's uh, your, your not your career, but, but some creative project being challenged now financially and how this can turn for you since it is the second house of income. And you'll also see how Jupiter is going to, while it's touching Chiron, the planet of healing, uh, it will bring something in, not like a band-aid, but actually healing from within. And it may be on levels where you've put out so much energy without seeing the outcome or the consequence yet, and where you've been hurting, Sag. You know, and uh, so, so this healing project is that once things are now starting to fall into place for you, that becomes the healing itself. And then we have uh, also the new moon, and that is for you. Uh, no, the, the full moon, I am sorry, on the 27th of March. And it is uh, in your 11th house for social networks. It's groups, organizations. Um, people and places here that somehow one way or another can connect with you and where you can harvest from these groups and where they may be harvesting also from you and your input. And also on the 27th we have a beautiful day of Venus conjuncting your Sun. Venus is love and those things that we appreciate when we feel good. You're extra charming on this day and we also have that same Venus conjuncting um, Uranus, which is full of surprises, unexpected things uh, showing up in your fifth house. So, uh, you know, anything as far as love could be touched. It could be things about children. It could be a new love coming in. Or it could also be a monetary gift because Venus is also money. And the sun is also there. So it's like boom, boom, boom here on the 26th, 27th. Pay attention to the end of this month. And then it all ends up also with Mercury communicating with Pluto on some new, either a new concept or a concept that has been in the works for a while, but which now you can really start getting some gehir. And this may also touch anything as far as your financial situation and your home-based enterprise or thoughts about the home. And also, like I said in the beginning of it, your reading of the past, your own ancient history and sense of self. You might get flashes on this day. Anyhow, Sagittarius, it was nice taking a quick look at your chart. I hope to see you in class. Check it out on the link below. Make sure to subscribe so you get your monthly forecasts. And before you log off YouTube, make sure to read or listen to your moon sign and your rising sign and perhaps that of your partner, so you get even more so an insight to what's going on with you. Bye now.